Okay, and we are live. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another live stream. It is the 14th of April, Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon here in Spain, as they say, 7.30 p.m., and we're going to have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press over the last couple of days or so, and uh, also look at some comments that have been left on the channel in recent times. Then in the second half of this evening's live stream, we'll go into the chat section, which I have here to my right, and we'll uh, look at what's going on in the chat section. So if, if you are watching this evening, say hello in the chat section. Now straight into the news, and uh, the housing minister, the minister of housing here in Spain, uh, perhaps are going to make some big changes changes in the near future when it comes to short-term holiday rentals. And as we can see here, Isabel, Ro Isabel Rodriguez quoted as saying, we need to regulate the renting of rooms. It is leaving people unprotected. Isabel Rodriguez is in charge of putting a face to this new stage of the Ministry of Housing as an independent department, a commitment, therefore, by the government in the legislature that began at the end of last year. After more than 100 days in office, the minister reviews the current affairs at the end of the week, in which the government has made several announcements in this area, such as the elimination of golden visas and the speeding up of building permits. In the meeting held on Friday in her office in Madrid, she focuses on on tourist, temporary or room rentals which are being used to avoid certain legal controls. And when asked the question, will the government intervene in the tourist department market, she replied, next month I am going to convene the autonomous communities to and town, hall, uh, town councils to address the issue uh, through the housing sectoral conference together with the tourism sectoral conference and through the housing and tourism commissions of the Spanish Federation of municipalities and provinces, we will have to intervene and limit tourist flats. We cannot look the other way because this economic activity is affecting a constitutional right. And the constitutional right in question here is the right to dignified or decent housing, which all Spaniards are entitled to. And unfortunately, as we know, some people can't get decent housing because of the short-term rental market in their cities in their cities basically focused at tourists ruining it for uh, ruining it for locals the short-term rental market so as a result the government as we can see here planning to intervene and regulate this sector now this is going to be huge news for people that have invested in Spain maybe have an Airbnb somewhere in Spain or a couple of Airbnbs, uh, be warned, the government is going to regulate and intervene in that market. So uh, stay tuned for any changes that you might have. Not sure what the changes are going to be because as we saw here, the minister is going to sit down with the uh, housing sectoral conference and the tourism sectoral conference and the uh, housing and tourism commissions to try and come to a uh, decision. Uh, it's not going to be easy but uh, they are working towards that. 100 days in office, and that is the big change. The golden visa was scrapped because according to this minister and other people in the government, it uh, created speculation. Uh, but uh, some people disagree with that, of course, and uh, now going to, uh, going to uh, hit the Airbnb market, which has grown a lot over the last five, six years here in Spain, especially, as I said, in tourist areas, Barcelona, Madrid, Costa del Sol, Canary Islands, and uh, people are complaining. Next piece of news here, and the registration of foreigners leads Benidorm to reach its historical peak of population. The Alicante town of Benidorm has reached an all-time high in its demographics with around 74,600 inhabit inhabitants recognised by the National Statist Statistics Institute, if I can get that word out. This figure, with uh, the E missing, marks a significant increase of approximately 2,250 people compared to the previous year and 820 more than in 2013 when Benidorm recorded its previous population ceiling. Benidorm's mayor, Tony Perth, has emphasised the importance of these figures, noting that they reflect a growing interest in both residing, residing and registering in the town. Perth attributes this phenomenon to various factors, including the progressive improvement of public services, the economic and, 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 and employment, 
employment opportunities, I should say, offered by as a leading tourist destination, as well as the municipal measures implemented in recent years, such as the parking sticker for residents, the citizen card, and discounts on public prices. Now, if you're wondering what the registration of foreigners is, it's what they call here the padron. You uh, go to the local council, you put, you uh, fill in a form, and the local council registers you on its uh, padron, uh, the uh, municipal register, if you like. And more and more British people, obviously, and other foreigners who have moved to Benidorm recently, uh, registering with the local council. And that's what helps the local council get money to uh, create services, to create jobs, and all of those things here in Spain. That's why it is important to register. So uh, if you are in Benidorm residing and you haven't registered yet, uh, do yourself a favor and get down to the local town hall and uh, put your name down. Because as I said, it helps that council get services from the central government, I believe. And the final piece of news here, the government announces the end of the Francisco Franco Foundation. We are going to extinguish it, the government has said. The Minister for Democratic Memory, Angel Victor Torres, announced this Friday that the end of the Francisco Franco Foundation is very near. We are not outlawing the foundation. What we are doing is extinguishing it. If a foundation commemorates and glorifies someone, it makes no sense in a democracy, he said. During a visit to the agricultural penitentiary colony of Tefia, a Francoist concentration camp on the island of Fuerteventura, the minister responded with a categorical yes to the question of whether we are uh, close to the, to the definitive end of the Francisco Franco Foundation. Now, and those of you who are wondering what the Francisco Franco Foundation is, well, the former dictator of Spain, Mr. Franco, has his own national foundation set up, as we can see here, uh, in 1976, devoted to promoting the legacy of the Spanish dictator Francisco Franco uh, by the only child of Franco, Carmen Franco, and uh, she led the organization and later became its honorary president. Don't know if she set it up, but uh, as we can see here, she was the honorary president of this foundation. And uh, quite strange that a foundation exists in a country to a dictator, because I'm sure that if you go to Germany, you won't find a Hitler Foundation. If you go to Italy, you won't you won't find a Mussolini Foundation. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. But here in Spain, of course, the Francisco Franco Foundation uh, running, and the government, as we saw there, they're not going to uh, they're not going to uh, out outlaw it. They're going to extinguish it completely, get rid of it, and make sure that there is no uh, foundation commemorating the memory of Mr. Franco. And uh, I'm sure that some people will be upset, especially members of that foundation. But again, strange that this uh, type of foundation exists here in Spain. Now, uh, into the news, the uh, sorry, the uh, into the comments, the first one here from Yenisi. Hi, Stu and all, not Sue. Perhaps the government of the Canary Islands should require new hotels to put aside affordable apartments within the hotel. Obviously, for people working in the hotel. Yeah, good idea, Nissi. But I don't think uh, hotels are obliged to do this. Should they do it to help uh, people with uh, cheaper accommodation, especially people working at the hotel? Probably. But uh, they don't. There's no uh, law for them to do it. And uh, nobody or no hotels uh, do this on a large scale, I don't think. Maybe some of the uh, bigger hotel chains can offer accommodation to the workers. But I think uh, a lot of them don't, and that's why uh, workers in hotels and restaurants have issues with accommodation in places like the Canaries, the Balearics, or other tourist hotspots in the country. Good idea, but I don't know whether it uh, happens on a large scale, as I said. Another one here from GAR. If the tourists stop coming, the islands will almost certainly die. As always, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, GAR, I don't think uh, there's any talk of uh, banning tourism Altogether, I think they just want to uh, change the model, make it a more uh, sustainable model, 
uh, a friendlier model to the locals rather than this uh, mass tourism model that has been uh, set up here in Spain where locals get squeezed out, as we can see, uh, uh, for uh, by uh, tourist interests, whether it's the Canaries, whether it's the Balearics, whether it's uh, cities in Spain, the tourism industry is that mass model. And that's what they want to change. Nobody wants to get rid of tourism completely. The Canary Islands are well aware that tourism is a very important sector, if not the important sector in their economy down there. They don't want to scrap it completely, but they just want to uh, change it a little bit so that uh, it coexists uh, in harmony with uh, the local population, unlike the uh, uh, model that there is now. Where, which just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and people are getting squeezed out. That's why they're complaining. That's why they're going on hunger strikes or planning to go on hunger strikes, and uh, that's the reality. So not to scrap tourism completely, but uh, just make it uh, a little bit uh, friendlier, I would say. And uh, let's be honest, if you are, are, are a resident in the Canaries and affected by this, that's what you want. You don't want to see it disappear, but uh, a little bit more, a little bit friendlier, as I said. One here from RG. Stuart, I feel for Salvador's plight, but he is in the country illegally. What does he expect? Can't get a good job? Well, those are reserved for legal residents or citizens. Periodic amnesties will only encourage millions, yes, millions from other countries to just come to Spain. Maybe cheap labor, cheap labor for employers, but uh, long term, a major drain on the education and health care budgets. Yeah, RG, uh, thanks for the comment. Um, we saw this uh, plight, as you put it here, uh, from a, a migrant here in Spain living illegally, uh, saying that uh, he's waiting for the amnesty so that his uh, situation is sorted out. He can open a bank account, access the health uh, service, and uh, further down the track, no doubt, bring his young family over who are in uh, his country of origin. And that's the situation for literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people uh, around uh, Europe, that they uh, come here, don't get the uh, situation that they want uh, because the government is slow here in Spain and other countries to uh, legalize illegal immigrants. But uh, RG saying that, uh, uh, well, that's what uh, they deserve. They're illegals. You know? But uh, yeah, but uh, we cry out for cheap labor. We cry out for people like Salvador. And uh, at the end of the day, I think if they are in the country for a long time working illegally, uh, better to sort their situation out rather than uh, send them home or uh, to their country of origin. But again, that's just my opinion, because as I said, countries in Europe cry out for cheap labor, and uh, sometimes you need to uh, make people legal, of course. One here from Stephen. Cheap to travel, maybe if you live around Europe, but if you live in Canada, a flight over to Spain in economy baggage class will put you down over five, uh, $1,500, not including paying B&B stay. That will uh, put you another $2,000 for a week, Canadian dollars, I imagine. Uh, that's a lot of moolah spinach for just one week. Yeah, obviously, when you live in Canada or the States or Australia and you travel to Europe, it is expensive, uh, Stephen. I understand that. But uh, I was referring to European travel and all of the cheap options that have popped up in recent times, all of the uh, low-cost airline operators, uh, things like Airbnb making more affordable accommodation. For how long? I don't know, given the uh, current government's plans. But uh, it has made it very cheap to travel in Europe. Uh, I know that uh, from experience, you can pick up a, a Ryanair flight very, very cheaply. You can fly to other European countries very, very cheaply. So uh, I was talking about Europe. But as I said, if you're living in uh, outside the European Union, uh, perhaps it's still expensive to get here, no doubt. But uh, inside the European Union, uh, cheap travel uh, is the norm nowadays. Another one here from uh, Elena. When the new housing law came uh, last May, 6,000 uh, 6, new houses went up imme uh, went immediately off the market in, uh, on the Canary Islands. People are afraid of losing their houses uh, because the new law made it easier for squatters to take over your home. Airbnb gives more protection to house owners than the Spanish government. If your property rights will be protected, I'm sure many landlords would rent out to working people. And, uh, and uh, of course, this is an issue that uh, some other people have mentioned in the comment section, the housing law that was 
passed by the government during their last term, whether it was two years ago or three, not sure exactly. And uh, there is um, uh, a theory that a lot of uh, homes were taken off the market because uh, landlords didn't have legal security against uh, squatters and uh, things like that. So it is an issue also. It has added to the problem, no doubt, uh, but uh, the government uh, seems fairly, um, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for here, fairly um, uh, fairly uh, keen to blame it on the uh, golden visa rather than on their own policies because, let's be honest, nobody want, wants to be told that you've made a mistake with, uh, with a policy, right? But uh, in some part there, the uh, commenter here, Alina, is right. Uh, houses were taken off the market. Uh, put on to uh, Airbnb because the uh, longer term rentals uh, were the, the the situation for longer term rentals was not favorable to landlords and that uh, also is an issue but as I said uh, you won't hear the government uh, saying that they made a mistake uh, one here from uh, Patricia the hotel La Tejita was always in breach of the environmental regulations it is local to me it is unnecessary and a blight on the landscape and not wanted by locals and tourists alike. Uh, we all think of the uh, we all think of one we all think one of the powerful Tenerife families who have been responsible for turning their otherwise useless land into profit by development are the real culprits. And uh, basically, Patricia summed it up. That's the problem around Spain: uh, land that was formerly used for agriculture or or nothing, uh, but it had a prime location turned into a hotel resort or uh, some other type of housing development uh, and that's the issue not only in the Canaries but around Spain as well and also very close to the coast breaking coastal rules and regulations which uh, we've seen in Almeria there's a, a horrible development down there very close to the coast illegal but they continue it continues to sit there because of uh, legal uh, stuck in a legal um, uh, situation with uh, courts and uh, all of those things uh, they can't pull it down and in the Canary Islands as well with the hotels that we mentioned there two of the um, uh, biggest complaints that locals have these hotels are popping up all around the place and uh, destroying the local landscape but uh, yeah family's getting rich somebody's getting rich that's why i said the other day that uh, greed is one of the main issues right and the last comment here from surfer 727 thank you very much i was planning a trip to spain as i was considering getting the spanish golden visa you saved me about seven thousand dollars you're welcome surfer I didn't save you the money. The uh, Spanish government, <laughs> no doubt, has saved you the money. But uh, as we know, the uh, end of the golden visa, I don't think there is a date set yet. Not sure when the government is planning to abolish the golden visa. They announced it uh, last week, but when it will actually uh, happen, I don't know. So if you're still planning to uh, get into Spain on that golden visa, you might have time. But uh, I'd be quick if I were you because it's not going to be around for much longer. But I'm sure they'll come up with some type of uh, alternative because foreign investment is uh, important for the country. And uh, that type of foreign investment, that luxury foreign investment, I'm sure that the government wants that money coming in. I just think they want to control who comes into the country, which is another issue, right, as we saw the other day. Now, uh, into the uh, chat section, I'm going to go in just a minute. Before I do that, the background photo is changed. This one was sent in uh, by John, and it is the port of Denia down there in Alicante. I think Denia is in the Valencian community, coastal town, and the ferry sitting in the port there which will soon be heading to the island of Ibiza, I imagine. So thanks, uh, John, for sending this picture through. And if you have a similar picture that you would like to see on the backdrop, the email address is this one here, spainspeaks at gmail.com. Feel free to send through your pictures. Uh, feel free to send through your news articles, anything that catches your attention about Spain and you would like to bring to my attention, the email address is that one there, spainspeaks at gmail.com. Uh, thanks to all of the, oh, sorry, firstly, the uh, like icon. I'll put that on the screen. We're currently at uh, 59 likes. So if you hit the like icon, we could get up to uh, a decent tally today. 
uh, maybe 60, maybe 70, maybe 80 even. Let's see. Hit the like button, please. And a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's the super thanks or super chat option on uh, YouTube, uh, buying me a coffee, longer term supporters on Patreon. Thank you very much. We had uh, a new Patreon join uh, today. Uh, another patron joined the uh, last week, I think. And also uh, people that have joined the channel recently as members. Thank you very much also for that, for keeping this channel alive. Uh, your donations help greatly. They help a lot. Thank you very much for that. Now uh, into the chat. Let's go there, see what's happening. I'll just scroll up. We've got a super chat here from Marcus. Uh, five euros. Join me uh, in a vinico. Thank you very much, uh, Marcus. Glad to be back from travels to proper food and drink in Spain. Thank you very much, Marcus. I will indeed. I'll put that towards a bottle of wine this week, and I'll open it uh, uh, thinking of uh, your uh, donation here to the channel. Thank you very much, Marcus, for that. Now, uh, let me scroll up to the top. Uh, Brian is the first uh, comment that I can see here. Hi, Stu. Shorts back on. What you think happens? A mozzie bit my leg. First bite of the year, and it's only April. Well, uh, I've been seeing mosquitoes for... Basically, the whole uh, winter uh, where I am here, Brian, you open a door, a mosquito comes in, and you've got that annoying zzz around when you sleep. Extremely annoying. Uh, wasn't bitten, as you were with your shorts on, but uh, I feel for you, Brian, because it is mozzie season, and uh, it's going to get worse from now on, and also flies. So, uh, yeah. yeah, prepare for that. Prepare for that. Bronnie in the chat here as well, coming in from uh, South Wales. 10 degrees with uh, sunshine and heavy showers. Uh, best wishes, Bronnie. Thanks for that, Bronnie. Renan coming in from LA, Los Angeles. Stephen, valued member in the chat. Happy to be able to catch the live stream in uh, from Torrevieja. Weather is gorgeous. Spent the day at La Mata Beach in perfect conditions. Good to see you back in Spain, Stephen. Enjoy. And uh, yes, I imagine the weather is very good where I am here in Madrid. Fantastic day to day. Richard, also a valued member coming in from uh, Pizarra, Malaga. He got, uh, they got there on Saturday morning. The weather is fantastic. Uh, been full sun all day down to Mercadona, stocked up on Berdejo, which is a uh, white wine variety here. Mm -mm. Thanks, uh, Richard. Enjoy. Leslie coming in from a hot Murcia. Well, if it's hot where I am, it's hot in Murcia. I can guarantee that almost. Gino coming in from Canada, I think, Gino. We'll be in Spain shortly with uh, Isabella to finalize an apartment purchase for my parents' retirement. What an ordeal. Mm, yes, absolutely. Yeah, good to see you, Gino. Janet, a valued member also from Oxford, where they've uh, had three whole days with no rain. A miracle, right? Three whole days with no rain. One, two, three, coming in from County Waterford, also a valued member. Matthew Curry, uh, coming in, saying hello to everyone. Pamela also saying hello, as is Chrissy. I'll just make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Chrissy coming in from a Granada, I think. Erica watching from Catalonia today. Hot there, sunny, 28 degrees. Have a good week. Uh, still needing the rain, no doubt, in that part of Spain, but uh, the good weather is basically everywhere, I think. J-Op coming in from Wisconsin. Uh, caught a live for the first time in a long time. 26 degrees there, sunny. Higher than my beloved, uh, beloved Alicante. Uh, Valadia coming in uh, from South Africa, is that? It's either South Africa or South Australia, not sure. Uh, Dave coming in from uh, Dior Under. Enjoy the... Thanks, uh, Dave. I imagine that's Down Under. Uh, another Dave coming in from Florida. Uh, enjoy your Domingo, says uh, your Sunday, says Dave. Thank you very much, Dave, for that. Good to see you. Sunny in Spain at the moment, I think. Oh, no, just home. After a fantastic week with family in Valencia. Thanks, uh, Sai. Great to say you great to see you had a good time in Spain. Janet saying the changes may affect uh, her as I always rent when I visit, but it needs regulating for the sake of local Spaniards. That's what they're crying out for, Janet. Some type of regularization, regularization to uh, make it uh, easier to rent uh, an apartment. We can go into the reasons 
as to why Airbnb has taken off. But at the end of the day, when people don't have access to accommodation, which, as we saw, is a constitutional right here in Spain, decent accommodation, people start to complain and the government starts to uh, take action. Take action. Uh, Dave coming in from a windy Dundee. Enjoy the live shows. I thought maybe that was down under, was it? It was a windy Dundee in Scotland. Uh, Alan, valued member also, coming in from uh, San Diego. Athefrio A, cold there, 12 degrees Celsius. Uh, Shangin coming in from Shanghai. Good to see you, Shangin, formerly uh, of uh, Ballarat, I think it was. Uh, Richard saying that there's no empty pools near us like ours. Most pools are kept full year round and can have the same water for years when treated properly on top, but only top up due to evaporation in summer. Yeah, Richard, uh, thanks for that. Yeah, a lot of people uh, do keep water in their pools, but of course some people need to do maintenance on their pools over those winter months. That's why you need to empty them. Maybe you've uh, some type of crack or uh, some type of uh, other issue that the pool needs to be emptied, and uh, that's the problem, isn't it? That if you have had uh, works done to your pool and it is empty and you're not allowed to fill it up, it's going to be an issue. But, uh, yeah, you're right. A lot of people keep water in their pools, uh, 12 months of the year and you put in some type of a product over the winter months or you cover it up keep the filter running and uh, your pool stays in a reasonable condition unlike back in the old days when the water would go green you can uh, stop that nowadays and uh, have your pool basically um, um, operable uh, 12 months of the year uh, except uh, it would be too cold to swim Andrew coming in, uh, also a valued member here from the UK, London South East to be exact, hoping we are well, two days without rain there, three days in Oxford without rain, two days in uh, South East London. Uh, Belinda coming in, tourist department market needs controls, question mark. Uh, BC, the government uh, does such a speedy and efficient job at regulations, cut the tourist flow and snap shut the Euro streams, hopefully reasonable controls we'll wait and see it was just an interview with the minister in question belinda nothing's been uh, uh set in stone yet so we'll wait and see what the plans of the government are uh gg soon to be back in spain currently in arizona arizona coming in counting down the days until walking again uh there's a minister of democratic memory says uh asking the question says dave uh, of course there is uh, here in spain dave and uh, this was a uh a concept that I think uh, a former Prime Minister, Mr. Zapatero, came up with, democratic memory to uh, change or uh, not really change the way Spaniards uh, look at their history, but uh, to add another voice to it, I think, and of course uh, change things that people don't necessarily think are right uh, uh, when it comes to uh, recognizing recognizing certain aspects of history especially Spain's difficult history over the last 100 years. I mean, I've said this before here, I think that when you come from a country like Australia, it's got a difficult history as well, but as a democratic country, it's been fairly solid for the last 100 years or so, ever since the uh, constitution was set up. Uh, but here in Spain over the last 100 years, they've had uh, absolute monarchy, uh, dictatorship, democracy, uh, dictatorship again and now democracy so it's been a, a, a rough or rocky 100 years and uh, some people have a different version of history than others so uh, that's what they want to try to sort out with this uh, minister of democratic memory uh, what else we got going on here let's have a look um jab is saying uh, well a left government can only apply more communism yeah, don't think it's that extreme, Jabba. Uh, what else? Patrick saying, well said, Stuart. Thanks, Patrick. Can't remember what exactly what I said, but uh, thanks for that. Uh, Joe saying, horrible what happened in Sydney on Saturday. What are your thoughts on this, being an Aussie yourself? Well, uh, not much you can do, really, if somebody decides to get a big knife or whatever uh, weapon that this person had and you want to kill people. Uh, I read in the paper today that the, he was uh, uh, a mental um, um, uh, health patient who obviously uh, had some issue and um, did what he did in the wrong place at the wrong time. Not much you can do about it, unfortunately. 
but I'm sure that there will be changes as a result of the six or seven people unfortunately lo losing their lives. Not sure how many people exactly uh, the um, uh, the perpetrator also being uh, gunned down. So uh, yeah, terrible, but. Yeah, what can we do? What can we do? Wrong place at the wrong time. And if somebody wants to do this with a big knife or whatever the weapon was, they do it, right? Um, you will find people nostalgic for uh, for um, uh, this person, especially in Lago Garda, where a Mussolini museum used to be. Yeah, uh, so what's that? Il Dulce. Um yeah, of course, people are nostalgic for the past. You get uh, sympathizers for a lot of the um, uh, leaders of the past, especially people that they consider uh, to be uh, good leaders. Other people consider them to be bad leaders, but some people consider these leaders to be the best that ever happened to these countries. But, uh, yeah, don't know, don't know. It's complicated. Uh, Chrissy looked at uh, flights from Malaga to the UK in May out of my budget, two to three hundred plus with Ryanair. Uh, where are you travelling from? I thought you were in Granada, Chrissy. You're travelling uh, from the UK, maybe. Uh, Janet also saying that uh, Ryanair nearly 400 each for her and her husband. There we go. So not so cheap anymore, maybe with Ryanair. Uh, Flutter Girl coming in from a sunny Toronto. Wow, 200 in the chat right now. Yeah, 203 to be exact, uh, uh, Flutter Girl. 480 uh, Air Airbnbs currently on offer in Tenerife for under 1200 a month. There we go. Under 1200 a month for uh, 480 Airbnbs. But uh, I suppose, Dave, that the, uh, uh, the regular price for a rental in uh, the Canaries would be a lot less than 1200 a month, I imagine. Uh, Joe just travelled uh, from Malaga to Rome for €22. Euros. I, uh, I wish there was a decent, affordable train connection between European countries, but they're still quite expensive. Hmm. A rapper coming in from, from Rhodes. Schengen's a Spanish citizen uh, working overseas. I rent my flat out short term because tenant over 12 months are entitled to stay five years. This would exclude me from using my own house on my return. Hmm, that is true. That is true. Philip coming in from a cool, sunny London. Uh, Mikael, uh, I came in late to the, uh, to the uh, stream, was uh, walking dogs. We'll catch up later. Thanks for the effort to keep us informed with Spanish news. Mikael living in Torrox, Costa, Andalusia. Good to see you, Mikael. John coming in, uh, going back a few days, referring to the 500,000 illegals being accepted into Spain. How have illegals been able to obtain a contract job if they are illegal? Not necessarily they have a, a contract, uh, John, but if they're able to uh, pr prove that they have been in that employment um, uh, for two years, maybe they have some type of rental contract or maybe they have some other type of document uh, saying that they have been working for two years, uh, they'll, be able, they'll be able to apply for this amnesty when the government uh, uh, gets it all sorted out. Andrew saying that uh, his cousin recently got a return ticket from Gatwick to Alicante for £75. So you can get cheap tickets still, and that's what uh, uh, people um, uh, are doing. They're just getting uh, random uh, tickets, I think. If you want to plan a trip, maybe it's more expensive, but if you just want to go you know, from Gatwick to Alicante for £75, you can do it. And we think we saw another one, what was it, £22 before? Uh, Malaga to Rome, 22, 22 euros, so that is cheap. Katie saying, uh, can't find the like uh, button. Should be below the video unless you're watching on a television, uh, Katie, and then there might not be a like button. But if you're watching on uh, a telephone or a tablet or your computer, below the video you will find a like button to this video. Jimmy's back in Madrid. Good to see you back here, Jimmy. What else? Uh, Simon saying that it cost uh, 1,000 euros from Alamedia to Folkestone via the tunnel return. Three nights, four days each way via the tunnel. Our hotels are free. Uh, that is all petrol, food and tolls. There we go. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, when you have to put petrol into the equation or fuel into the equation, things do uh, get expensive, right? Things do get expensive. 
Uh, Diana San Miguel from Hiya from Vancouver, British Columbia. Love Torre Molinos. Sunny but chilly for keeping up my st- Spanish tan. Warren's coming in from San Antonio, Texas. 81 degrees Fahrenheit there. What else we got going on here? Taraz coming in a bit late today. Uh, need to catch up, no problem. Giovanna coming in also from uh, Extremadura, I think. Giovanna, right? Thank you for my work. Thank you. And uh, that's about it. What else we got going on here? Jake, the last one that I can see, coming in from uh, Wales. Another Welsh viewer in the chat. Now I'm going to wrap it up. I'll be back again on uh, Tuesday, I think, or maybe not. We'll see. But uh, if I don't uh, put a live stream out on Tuesday, there will be no uh, record of it on uh, YouTube. But I'll I'll try to do something, but I can't guarantee it. Uh, If I can't, the next live stream will be on Thursday. Regular video out tomorrow as always. But then there will be uh, content coming out through the week. So uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for participating in the chat. Thanks to Marcus for his uh, super chat supporting the channel. Thank you very much, Marcus, again. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow with a regular video and the next live stream. Thursday guaranteed. Tuesday can't guarantee it, but uh, I'll try. So uh, hopefully I will. But uh, as I said, can't guarantee it. Hasta luego. Hasta entonces. Adios. Bye-bye.